destiny urges me to a goal of which I am ignorant. Until that goal is attained, I am invulnerable, unassailable. When destiny has accomplished her purpose in me, a fly may suffice to destroy me. This is Derek O'Fodernwa with The Medicine Show. And today I want to explain the philosophy behind Ikenga, the phenomenon described in the quote. In this video, I'll explain what Ikenga is, the philosophy behind the idea, how to understand and identify your Ikenga, and then finally, how to unlock it. Ikenga is the order of the right hand. People refer to Ikenga as the gift of my chi. It is the spark of power, courage, confidence, energy, an ability that breaks forth from an individual who dares walk the path they were destined to walk. It is that hyper self that manifests when you bravely face the odds that stand between you and becoming the person you are destined to become. It is the propulsion from your spirit that manifests achievement. It is you operating at your maximum potential, actualizing the power of the God within you. Ikenga is you as a force of nature. In ancestral thought, the right hand represents your agency and ability to enforce your will upon the universe around you, your ability to have say through action in the universal order. It is the animating energy in all things in existence and beyond. In Igbo cosmology, Ikenga is the spirit of industry, enterprise, agency, inner power, achievement, victory, and action. It is the element that a person must spend time mastering and appeasing within themselves before taking on great endeavors, because it is the force that propels you to victory. Ikenga means you have control of your fate, as you are bestowed with the same all-powerful right hand that God used to create the universe. Our ancestors summed up the Ikenga's ability to see you through the impossible in the proverb that says, As long as my Ikenga is active, I can wrestle in the world of spirits. In Igbo cosmology, authority is represented in two forms. The first is the Alpha which is a staff that represents the authority given to a person passed to them from Chuku via their ancestors. The Ofo, which I'll cover in another video, is passed down from generation to generation. It is used by elders to bless kin, make oaths, and earn a seat in community congress, gain authority in making decisions as a whole, and judge over trials. Ofo allows the individual to be a representative of the dead and the living collective, and encourages you to consider the community and the ancestors when making decisions or speaking truths. It is the communal aspect of authority. But as the Ofa binds the whole, Ikenga differentiates the individual. Unlike the Ofa, the Ikenga is not inherited. Each Ikenga is built within the lifetime of its owner and destroyed upon death. Sometimes an owner can destroy their own Ikenga before passing, and I'll get to the reason for that shortly. To represent the uniqueness of the individual's divine and driving force, the Ikenga statue is typically built with a diversity of looks, each one representing what makes an individual powerful, but following the same symbolic framework. Understanding the physical form of the carved Ikenga is important in understanding Ikenga as a whole. Because we're in the dualistic state, where things appear in twos, there are two forms of Ikenga. The first is Ikenga Madu, which represents the person, and the second is Ikenga Mo, which represents the spirit. Ikenga Madu belongs to the world of Eke, which is the physical manifest universe, and thus looks like an anatomical human being. Ikenga Madu is built to represent you as an individual, and its traits are easily identifiable as parts of the uh, physical existence of the owner. In contrast, Ikenga Mo belongs to the ethereal world of the Chi, and is therefore built as an abstraction. It is not immediately recognizable as a physical representation of its owner. Ikenga Maru is a tool for guiding you towards unlocking your earthly Ikenga, and Ikenga Mo is the same for your latent spiritual power. In Igbo numerology, Ikenga is represented by the number three. 
with four representing completion and equilibrium. The number three therefore represents incompletion. In nature, the incomplete or the unbalanced elements seek completion or equilibrium, and therefore, as they move towards completion, they form nature's animating forces. All movement and energy, spiritual and physical, is created by the kinetic spark of the unbalanced seeking balance. Therefore, elements in nature move towards what they need to move towards to balance them. Heat spreads into the cold of areas, light spreads into darkness, positive seeks negative charges, and concentrations of matter like water spread from where they are abundant to where they are scarce. Everything in nature either attracts or repels based on what they need to find balance. This animation or spark of kinetic energy created by the quest for completion is the ikenga in natural elements. As you seek completion by moving towards your chi, it is the kinetic spiritual energy and physical energy that propels you. Therefore, the word ikenga is a composite word meaning strength of movement. You have an ikenga, the rivers have an ikenga, communities have ikenga, Arushi and Chineke have ikenga themselves. This is the force that animates them in existence and beyond. And because you are incomplete and born to move towards your chi for completion, the key to unlocking your ikenga is understanding your destiny. To understand the ikenga, one must look at it. This is why it is important to have your ikenga represented in physical form. A crafted ikenga has three major differentiating elements, its head, its right hand, and its left. Its head almost always features two prominent horns. The style and look of the horns differ based on who you are as a person. To understand the meaning of the horns, it helps to know the ancestral proverb that says, the ram enters battle head first. The crown of horns exists to remind you that you have what it takes to enter the battle head first. It also exists to remind you that the power of your ikenga is unlocked when you charge head first into whatever battle you may be facing. The right hand typically features an individual's instrument of action. For example, the warrior ikenga given to young men when they are of military grade age in the society features a sword while the ikenga of a wise man or a uh, dibia features a ritual staff. The instrument of action is a symbol derived to encourage the individual to learn what they do best and wield it as a guide or a clue towards reaching their destiny. In the left hand sits the product of what the right hand produces, almost always a human skull which represents mastery over the obstacle or opponent. The philosophy of Ikenga is intimately tied with the idea of competition, either with oneself or engaging the external enemy head on. It encourages you to see life as a set of obstacles and challenges and reminds you that your chi gives you everything you need to overcome them. It says that your destiny will not be handed to you, but must be found through the force of your will on earth. It is important to remember that the Ikenga represents you and serves as a guide towards learning your power and where it lies within you as an individual. It is also a guide on how you can unlock it. The ceremony for unlocking your Ikenga is known as Imacha Ikenga. This ceremony is said to unlock your right hand and in many communities is a right to manhood for you many young boys. The ceremony itself is performed by a dibia and involves casting into the spirits to understand the nature of your chi. Ikenga also requires righteousness to keep active once activated. Participating in activities that offend your chi breaks the connection you have established between your chi, which is your ikenga. When an ikenga is not working, an individual is encouraged to look onto his own actions, thoughts, and intentions to see where the alignment was broken. An ikenga, a physical ikenga that is, that doesn't work is also destroyed by its owner and another one is crafted. That is why we have the saying, an ikenga that fails its master should be used as firewood. What I personally take away from studying the philosophy of Ikenga is that things you want done in the world must be done by you. In fact, your desire to see them done are a clue as to what your purpose for existing really is. The right hand that Ikenga represents is akin to the right hand of God. And the principle says that if God can do it for you, you can also do it for yourself. Ikenga is a representation of you, and the meaning is clear. 
the philosophy of Ikenga says that you are the divine intervention that you seek. And that's it. Uh, this concept is one that I've been studying for a while, and I've been lucky to have good teachers and great sources of information. Uh, even if the uh, concepts sound big, they're typically things that we experience on a day-to-day -day basis, so bear with me if my language is kind of out there. Um, I know that when I'm locked into something I'm very passionate about, I experience a uh, feeling similar to what's described in the quotes at the beginning of the video. And I know everyone has felt the same at one point or another. So uh, I want to know if you have any questions, uh, so go ahead and comment below. Also, let me know if there's anything in Igbo culture or cosmology that you want me to cover next. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and find me on Twitter at Shell Medicine. Thank you.